paintings that I made a long time ago. It this sun has fourteen rays and it is above average. And the sun with the twenty four rays is superior day and sun with no rays on the, is the worst day and the sun with 12 rays is the average day and 16 is good and 8 is bad do you mean the sort of the weather or do you mean mood yeah. and you say it's a bad day do you mean it's nasty weather outside or nasty weather inside it means a bad day means feeling sad feeling sad It's a very, very interesting thought, this, that the, the sun's rays become a sort of barometer of, of Jesse's feelings. Have you ever had wonderful days when it has 24 rays? Yes, <laughs> called the superior day. Like the heater paintings, Jesse's obsession with the sun had its origin in her childhood. This is... In the weird drawings Clara now showed me, I recognized good sons and bad sons. But I could make little sense of the system that went with them. Now, um, I think you're going to have to tell me what all this is about. Well, this is one of Jesse's astonishingly complex systems, which we don't fully understand. This is a sun which has eight rays. And these so-called flavor tubes have flavors inside, and here is rice pudding, little grains of rice in different colors. It's not a good thing because the, the sun has a, a below average number of rays. This is, this is wild, bizarre, magnificent, <laughs> absurd. Certainly there is a logic here, but there's something beyond logic. <laughs> there's law and flexible laws governing the correlation of color, of taste, the appearance of the sun. This is rice rice pudding. I want the one that correlates with vanilla licorice, but perhaps I cannot find it. Uh, this is one sees some of the intellectual core of autism in a system like this, uh, in which um, rigid logic and surreal fantasy are coalesced. It is lemon, lime, 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 lime. One also wants to say there's something um, very beautiful here. There's a, there's a sort of poetry, there's a sort of nutty poetry about this. It's also a sort of research project. It's a sort of nutty science. Jessie's need to confer her own strange vision of order on the world persists in her painting today. At a recent exhibition of her work, I came on the rays of the sun again, in a more mature form. This is a five-ray sunset. Five-ray sunsets exist. Jessie will tell you all about them. I don't know that they look like that. Here, it looks very, very terrifying, as if this, this house is, <laughs> is, is sort of going to be destroyed by, by, by events from, from outer space. It's a very spooky painting. This, in fact, is a house which faces her. It's just opposite her own house on Hoxley Street. When I made a, this is... The local Williamstown houses are frequently the subject of Jessie's paintings. This is where I made a sketch. I worked on the door where, where it used to be a port. Mm -hmm. In their tightly organized surfaces, I recognized the same ordering mentality that I had seen in the suns and the flavor tubes. I think with Jesse, as with many autistic people, the world is constantly threatening to disintegrate, to dissolve into, into chaos, into disorder, and she has to hold it tightly together. 
and she does this partly, I think, with these rigid geometrical constructs, but equally with this formal use of colour. Since we come into an unlabeled world, and without any very clear programs or tapes to guide us, we all have to make sense of the world and discover or devise or accept orderings of one sort and another. And one might say that science itself and, and civilization uh, and art are all about different, different orderings of a world to contain it and make it in some sense sort of intelligible and communicable and, uh, and bearable. bearable. I think there are two sorts of ordering which need to be distinguished. One is a quality of private ordering. For example, Jesse has a private ordering of the world with colour codes. This is not a public classification, it's her way of doing things. This is different from the notion of looking at a natural group of plants. Uh, or diseases uh, or, or anything else where where you're not imposing your you hope you're not imposing your own order on or code but you are discovering an order in the world at the summer camp in Ontario I met Warden Warden is 17 Oops. His autism is less extreme than Jesse's, but like her, his condition compels him towards a bizarre ordering of his world. No, this kind of word to use in Alvarez in Canada. He seemed intent on collecting and classifying examples of electrical outlets and circuits, creating areas of order here. This toaster takes 20 amps and 250 volts. Two positive wires going uh, so, so, so how many watts is that? 500 watts. Yeah, this is quite a bit. And do you know how many watts your brain is? I yeah, know that the human brain is about 30 watts. Yeah. So we really don't, we don't have as much power as a toaster. <laughs> It's you think the toaster blows up with watts? It's a joke? <laughs> <laughs> Do you collect these outlets, Warden? Is there something about the shape which, which fascinates you? I just like the you? shape and the overall. Um, I, I, think, I think in a way, almost like the way in which um, heaters used to used to fascinate Jesse and maybe still do as there's um you know, the world of outlets excites excites Warden. I don't quite know what it stands for. Does it stand for something special? Or is it just you what it describe is? The feeling. You can't describe the feeling. It's um, just the shape and uh, something about it. Maybe it's my culture but I like it. God the swear is hard to get in so it's do you have some other fixations? That's the cloud I'm pointing to. That's a cold front cloud above. It's not moving because the warm front's pushing the other way. Warden was fascinated yeah, by the weather. He was full of all kinds of facts about storms and cloud formations. Something about this guy is fascinating me. The way the currents move through, how storms occur. Um, have you seen pictures of tornadoes? Yep. On oh, TV, oh. they look like big funnel cloud. Right. Did you hear Barry got ripped through one time? Barry got ripped through? Oh, yeah. No, I, I didn't know they came May 31st, 1985, Barry, self here got ripped. The whole house, I went through it. There was no roofs on houses, just walls and basements. Remembering the exact date of the tornado was very important to Warden, that it was May the 31st, 1985. The apparent certainty of the calendar seemed to protect him from both the frightening amorphousness of time right. and the terrifying volatility of the weather. Yet, ironically, it was the very unpredictability and chaos of the weather that seemed to appeal to Warden. Bad storm pressure with thunder and lightning. This reminded me again of Jesse. 
here is a very strange phenomenon in the sky. There is a bolt of green lightning. Now, this is not just when green lightning occurs. And this green lightning maybe is threatening to destroy the house. Um, there's this other strange passion for the opposite of order, for weather anomalies, things, phenomena which are difficult to explain, which seem to alter the, the expected order of the world. And there are many of these, of these things here. And so suddenly, out of the blue, there is green lightning. Uh, there's been pollution, air pollution problems in Phoenix today due to the very stagnant atmosphere in the southwest. Jesse's weather fixation includes a ritual watching of the weather channel. Mostly cloudy skies in the south. With the cloud cover here, there's some rain and some thunder showers stretching from Louisiana into Alabama and parts of Georgia and Florida. She has a frequently confounded need for the city forecast to read all cloudy or all fair. If a single fair or cloudy threatens this pattern, there is a crisis. You folks around Lincoln know what I'm talking about. You've had a couple inches of snow today. She wants a world that is absolutely predictable, that is totally within her control. Imagine the TV program. Imagine that her father wants to watch the news and normally does watch the news at 6 p.m. It becomes an issue. He, tonight he isn't turning on the news and she's going to go and make him watch the news at 6 p.m. because that's part of life. Now, of course, she has her own routines at such and such a time, and certainly if they are disrupted, they are extremely anxiety-producing. The medical descriptions of autism didn't come till the 1940s, and there was some division of feeling as to whether this was a, a biological, organic uh, condition of the, of the brain. Uh, or whether it was something akin to a neurosis which had been produced by parenting or the absence of parenting, in particular the notion of a very cold, uh, aloof, refrigerator mother who gave no love to the child was very popular in the 1940s and 1950s and I think had a very devastating effect on many parents who, who were made to feel tremendously guilty for, for what they had done. On the level of the drain pipe, on the This is a child who doesn't look at you, or rather it's, it's worse than not looking at you. It's not avoidance. It's looking straight through you to the wall on the other side. You're not there. The hypothesis which was presented as the truth was that inside this child who's not responding, paying no attention to yourself, so forth, is a normal child. Uh, and all you have to do is to do the right thing since the other hypothesis is that the child is it is because you've been doing the wrong thing and I don't mean just the wrong thing just you know poor parenting and you make mistakes uh, the hypothesis was that well let's quote from Bruno Bettelheim's The Empty Fortress uh, the child is aware that its mother has willed its non-existence the child Again, this is Bettelheim, he'd been in Dachau, and one tends to model one's view of the universe on uh, what one has experienced. Uh, the child is responding as the so-called zombies did in the camps with total withdrawal from an absolutely 